Hey guys, welcome to today's tutorial and today we're going to go over how to write a basic JavaScript email validation script. It's not a foolproof method but it does counter out about 90% of the emails or possible spams that you will get. And also one other thing to note, this is only a client-side validation script. JavaScript is only for client-side so if the user visiting your website has JavaScript turned off this will not work. So make sure don't use this as your only method of email validation. Always have a server-side uh, email validation script as well, like server-side as in PHP, Perl, or anything that, that goes through it on the hosting side. So if in case JavaScript doesn't work out or JavaScript fails, it still does work over there. So you have two, uh, two layers of protection. And here we're just going to uh, try it out. So it says enter email address here and let's say let's go to um, tutorials at gmail.com submit there you go email successfully submitted so let's return to previous page let's try a, 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 an email address that we know that's not valid so let's go to uh, tutorials underscore period hyphen hyphen at gmail.com or actually hotmail.com is what I meant to write, hotmail.com. And if you try to get an email address at Hotmail, at least for now, you can't include a period in a Hotmail email address. Uh, a period is more of a Gmail thing. Now, this won't really work uh, when you're actually sending the email, but as far as the way we wrote the JavaScript for today's lesson goes, it does submit. So if we check it out, it does submit and that fake email address will get entered. Now we can go back to the code and, and uh, customize it for Hotmail, for Gmail, Yahoo Mail, um, any, any major uh, email service provider. But in the long term, if they change their email, subs, uh, email method, then your script will instantly become invalid and um, not as useful. So you have to be careful when you're doing those things. So now let's uh, take a look at the, the HTML and JavaScript code that we wrote. We're actually we're going to create a new page so that I'll just go through how to set up everything from the form all the way to the JavaScript. So let's create a simple HTML page. HTML opening tag and closing tags. Let's save this as, it's going to make a new folder. JavaScript email validator. I already created the folder and we're going to just name it as index.html. There you go. Let's create a header tag, closing header tag, body tag, closing body tag. And let's make a title, title for the web page. Let's say JavaScript email validation. There you go. And let's create a header tag, or a, a h1 tag actually. And let's give it a name of JavaScript email validation. There you go, simple as that. And let's go ahead and create the form. So let's go down one uh, line and form, close form. And let's say we want to have it uh, guide you to say enter email address here and an input tag, input type for uh, getting the email, so a text input tag. ID, let's call it email, so the ID is for the labeling. And name is also another label that JavaScript and PHP uses email as the name email like like the name is like the the PHP and JavaScript's version of an ID or a class whereas an ID is the same thing for CSS or cascading style sheet so let's uh, create a submit button input type Submit, value, submit. There you go.
And we actually have to uh, submit the form to somewhere so that we know that the form is being validated and actually getting uh, getting submitted. So let's actually give an ID for the form first. So let's call it email form. And the method, we're going to use get because we're not really going to send it to a PHP file. We're just going to do it superficially with an HTML uh, file for indication of submission. So post won't really work in our case. So just use get. And for the actual submission, we're going to submit it to a HTML file called submit underscore successful dot HTML. Really simple. And on submit, we have to run the JavaScript code. So type in on submit and type in JavaScript. This is how you insert um, any type of JavaScript action into the HTML code. You first type JavaScript and then colon, important there, and we're going to say return whatever the result is for the function called validate and uh, the, fa the function validate is going to have two um, two variables that it's going to get from this form. So let's create some quotes. And the first variable is is the email form variable or uh, or the the, e the forms ID variable. And the second one is going to be the actual email that we're going to uh, test against um, test for validation. So email here, if you go down here, it's called email and it's referring to the name email down here. So that's what it's not referring to the ID, it's referring to the name. If we were referring to the ID, we'd use something like get elements by ID function for for the JavaScript function. But we're just getting it through the label here. That's how we're going to use it because um, we're going to be using the, um, DOM DOM selection. And uh, now we're going to go create the JavaScript. Actually, let's uh, go create the submit successful HTML script first, uh, file first, since that's going to be really simple. So when the submission is successful, we want this page to appear. So let's create HTML, closing HTML. Let's save this as uh, submit underscore successful dot HTML. There you go. Creates a header tag, closing header, body, closing body. And we're going to create a title, the same thing. JavaScript email validation. And just a quick p tag to indicate that it was successful. Email successfully submitted. And we'll just type in one more line so that we can actually go back to the previous page. So we don't have to type it all the way back in the address bar every single time. Uh, a tag href index.html closing a tag and return to previous page. There you go. So that's just the page that it's going to appear when the submission is successful. Otherwise, we're just going to have some alerts pop up to say that it's not successful and that you have to change or edit uh, one of the form entries. So we're going to uh, write the JavaScript parts at the top here. And in order to do that, we are going to create some script tags. So script type text JavaScript. Go down here, close script tag. And we're going to create the function called validate. So function validate. And go down there, organize it a little bit. And it's going to receive two variables. So this is what I was talking about. Form ID variable and email variable. So basically, the form ID is going to correspond to the variable that's being submitted here, email form. And uh, email is going to be referring to the email which is going to be submitted. Pretty straightforward there. And we have to create our basic uh, regular expression variable. So let's create var reg. And uh, I'll just type a few things out. 
and then I'll explain how I did it later um, because it's slightly complicated and I want to see I want you to see the whole code before uh, before understanding how this all works. So I'm going to create um, two slashes. Um, that uh, symbol, <laughs> the house symbol, and see the dollar sign symbol goes at the end to indicate the beginning and the end, or not, it's not, doesn't mean not beginning or the end, but it means uh, this part has to go in the beginning and it has to end with this. So in between, I want to write some information a to z, lowercase a to z, 0 to 9. Uh, underscores allowed, um, hyphens allowed, periods allowed. And we want, and this can appear for one or more times. The next variable that pops up has to be the at symbol. So, whoops, escape slash at. And um, the next part, once again, we, we can create some more variables that that can be allowed can be from a to z, a lowercase a to z, 0 to 9, underscore, uh, hyphens are allowed, and once again periods are allowed. And this can repeat again after the at for at least one to unlimited amount of times. So you can restrict it to 10, you can restrict it to 20, uh, whatever you feel is appropriate, um, but that's once again getting to the specifications and it's going to leave you out with maybe 1% of the email. And as far as JavaScript goes, or this type of validation goes, it's always better to uh, better to allow that 1% one, 1 to get their email submitted in and have 10% spam rather than, let's say, sending that 1% of your potential customers away while trying to get rid of 10% of your spam. So it's, it's a trade-off and it's always good to err on the allowing that one percent to allow entry. So after this part, we we need a period so like .com or .gmail or .ca. So uh, let's say uh, escape escape period. Otherwise, if you don't escape the period, the period's going to mean any character but a new line. So you have to be careful where you put your um, your your escape slashes when necessary. It's very important. Then some more characters that are going to be allowed for the ending is going to be capital A to Z, lowercase a to lowercase z, and no numbers since there's no uh, ending domain names that have numbers in it as of today. And uh, this will be allowed two times. So two and four. So.